uh, it's 5.30 a.m. I'm tired, and it's 59 degrees outside. I Here's know. Here's coffee. Thank you very much. I hope you've got a travel mug for me, right? That's ain't it. One coffee experience, and you're on your way out the door. You're not going to be able to finish your coffee by the time you get to church, so there's your coffee for the morning. <laughs> I think we both know we will be having more coffee than that. <clears throat> Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. I don't know what's funnier. The animals are walking around going, why what is everybody up, up so early? This yeah. is way too early for even me to get up. Serious. Or is it that you are trying to talk in a low voice to not wake our children up? Well, what? I mean, it is early. Well, do they ever have the courtesy of not screaming at their video games at 2.30 in the morning? No, or if they're going someplace early, <laughs> usually everyone knows it. Oh yeah, doors slamming. That that's where the no cooking bacon in the house rule came from. Before John Paul had gotten married and moved out, he would get up at five o'clock in the morning and start making bacon. Yes. And I don't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning. That is and an it alarm would clock. Wake you up. And there I'm is like, no, no more cooking bacon in the house. You have to go outside to cook bacon. There is no sleeping through bacon cooking. Have no. you ever slept through bacon? No. There's lots of food that could be cooking, and I don't notice it. But if you cook bacon, I'm up. Yep. So it is Tuesday morning, January. Fourth, Fourth, right? So early what year. <laughs> it's still new. It's it's 2022, but yeah, I have. Here's the thing: I don't really write checks anymore, right? Because right. everything is digital and online. Although we have to write checks today, and I have to remember how to write the check out because we're going to get our passports, and we'll, we'll watch it can a only video. be paid for by how do check. You, how do you write a check? Right. We need a refresher. Course. How do you remember to write the new year in the big first month of the year? Uh, yeah, busy day, 5.30 in the morning. Rachel's headed out the door to early morning prayer. Today's uh, the second day of our church's 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm excited. Uh, Anthony and I have to cut the church today. Got to get everything done. And then at 3 o'clock, we got to go do our passport stuff. We have an appointment. So hopefully it doesn't take that long to get everything done. I feel like in this day and age, appointments are even more important, mm -hmm. right? Because you never know how long a line is going to be. So yeah. you don't chance it. You make sure you got an appointment. Still no car. <laughs> My poor mom. We've basically well, taken over her vehicle. Well, I did talk to the guy yesterday and, and he's concerned that the warranty company is going to deny the tire because of the way the bubble and is. It rinse it out. caused like an outside wear. And when you look at it in that one section, it looks like it needed an alignment. But if you look at the rest of the tire, it doesn't. So he said he was trying to angle the camera so that they don't deny it. He's like, the one tire I'm not concerned about, it's the other tire. He's like, because I know it's not from the alignment, but sometimes it's like you're, the snapshot of your body, right? The scale doesn't tell you everything. It tells you that little moment that you get on the scale, but it doesn't even tell you what it's going to say 30 minutes later. And so when he was trying to take the picture, he's like, every picture I took, it looks like you need an alignment. And he, he didn't want him to deny that claim. You know what I think? What? I think we dropped the car off before New Year's Eve, and they were like, yeah, we don't want to work on it, so no, today is day one. the guys at Volkswagen are, are really good. And, you know, we dropped it off on, like, what, two days before New Year's, right? This is my doubtful face <laughs> right here. <laughs> doubtful. Uh, so I think um, food today is going to be lots of leftovers. Which we is We don't want great. anything to go to waste. No. And, and here's the thing. All the leftovers we have, they're great reheated. Um 
and then we're going to see how the day goes. This is probably going to be a two-day vlog because we've got such a busy day. So we're getting ready to go to our passport appointment, but I have been going since what? Like 5.30 on a cup of coffee and I'm hungry. So, and it is what? Two o'clock. So I'm going to have a little eggs in a nest is what I used to always call it with the kids. I'm using um, uh, Maria Emmerich's bread. And then I just make a little hole in the center and drop an egg down in it and cook it inside of that. So I made two of those, two pieces of bread and two eggs. Well, that was painless. Yes, except for I definitely need to get a new driver's license. It's like two different human beings because, well, first of all, I have like orange red dyed hair in my driver's like license picture hair. and I'm a hundred pounds heavier. And then I'm like gray haired lady, a hundred pounds less. So I look like I'm my own mom. I feel like maybe now when we fly, you could just use that until you get a new driver's license because the amount of times that you have been stopped at the airport and then to go, that's not you. I keep saying I'm going to go to the DMV and just get a new driver's license, but I have another year. I've got another year and like, I don't want to go to the, the DMV. So like, what about you? Would you be willing to change your driver's license picture if it was a drastic change? Because it is a drastic change. I mean, right. it's a hundred pound different face right. in that picture, but that's how badly I hate waiting in line at the DMV. I was so worried they weren't going to take my birth certificate because my birth certificate is basically thermal paper. It was like microfish because it's from 1970 and it it's the looks older original than that. birth certificate. I think it's the original one. So it's that carbon it's, paper. It's all like fading because it's thermal and it's like a microfish kind of copy. And she's like, oh no, I, I can take this. This is what mine looks like too. In the meantime, though, I did actually order another birth certificate from New York just to have like an updated one. But even that one, they said it takes like two months to get that. So she marked it for Geely. Yeah, she she actually put it because, you know, they have to mail you back your, you know, birth certificate when they're done with it. And she put it in an envelope and showed us like I put this is a fragile birth certificate, like handle with care. And that's how she submitted it to you know the department of state i'm glad that we did it in in a timely fashion because it takes like eight to eleven weeks to get it back oh so we started filming what we're eating and eating and uh realized i didn't have the memory card that's how long in the camera it's been a long day has been i realized that i actually walked more than five miles just in my office today oh, from wow. my office to like kid spaces wow he is adding mineral drops to the soda stream yeah well okay so i figured this out so you have the last bottle of sam pellegrino over there thank you that i get the we last get that one. at sam's club it's a luxury mm -hmm. but at sam's club you get 15 7, 750 milliliter bottles so it's three quarters of a liter right and it's almost 18 bucks for that it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons I bought the soda stream wasn't to replace your San Pellegrino. It was to replace my regular seltzer water. I never liked the soda stream soda flavors. I just wanted it for seltzer water. They definitely taste like, mm, I could be drinking something else. Especially now that they have the bubbly add-ins. So now I can, and like, I, bubbly was always our favorite one of the right. seltzer waters, right? So I started figuring it out. So when you have the soda stream, if you bought, when you buy the, the thing and then you refill it, it's supposed to give you 60 liters. And that's for an average fizz. But I want it super fizzy, like San Pellegrino or Topo Chico, or Topo Chico right? Really bubbly. So I figure I will only get 45 liters because they say three to five. I'm doing five pumps. Right. So I'm figuring I'm going to probably get about 45 out of there. That breaks down to 33 cents, rounded up 35 cents per liter as opposed to $1.25. But there's a mineral taste to that. So what I started is. doing is adding about 10 drops of the Dr. Berry Daily Minerals in there. So when you only add a few drops, it gives a tiny bit of a mineral taste, just but like not like trying to drink this. No, Like no. this stuff, like we, I basically put it on our food. That's how we consume the Daily Minerals. I basically, but this is nice. as I'm cooking, salt it. So it saving really a like ton that. of money. 
Yeah. And you can get the refills at a CO2s at Walmart and Target and Bed Bath and Beyond. It's like 15 bucks to refill. We got the extra canister. So right. if I run out, I have one and then we can, when we're out, refill the other one. It's so. left overnight. Yeah, mm -hmm. left overnight. So we're having burgers because we had a bunch of burgers left that we hadn't cooked up. So we have burgers. On top of the burgers, we put chili. And then we're having the rest of the pot roast. Couple of slices of buckboard bacon that we got at Carol's. It comes across like a ham steak. It kind of, it's very thick like a ham steak, but it's fatty. It's fatty like bacon because he said it does come from the pork belly. Yeah. But when you fry it up, it doesn't shrivel up because it's so thick. It ain't going nowhere. And this is peppered one. And then we have a little bit of chili left over. And then I'm having a slice of the Maria Emmerich bread because you already had some earlier today. I did. But this is the stuff that we made in yesterday's video and you can see it. I like it like this. So it's still a little spongy. Right. You know, it's not like regular white bread, but it's got a good consistency and you can kind of squinch it down. But here's the thing about this. When we started adding the keto chow, we don't experience the choking. The crust. Right. Without it, it feels like. Where's Joe? I don't want to eat this by myself. Where's right. Joe? <laughs> like yeah. So the, the, like, again, I think that the keto chow because it's uh, because we're using the chicken soup one that is got the milk protein isolate in there, and I think that that is what's making this much more like a bread texture. Take so I a, like this, and just, this is the one without allulose because we can't have allulose. You right can now. always take off the crust. Or just chew I, it a lot. I eat the crust first. I know. But I'm just saying, like, I've told my mom, because she'll make the bread. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just just either chew the crust a lot mm -hmm. before you swallow or take the crust off altogether. Last night, I did end up having a half a creamy. I was feeling still a little hungry about an hour later. So I was like, yeah, I don't feel like cooking. That's the whole point of keto chow, mm -hmm. right? I don't feel like cooking. You know what? I've got, I think... 12 creamy pints in Ready the freezer outside. We'd made them for Christmas and then we didn't really even bother with them. So I grabbed one. It turned out to be root beer. I'd ask Rachel, do you want one? I would have had There's to. chocolate peanut butter ones out there, but she's like, I'm good. I don't want anything. So I made up the root beer knowing she wouldn't want it. And then she's like, oh, kind of would have been nice. But you ate a little bit of I it. I had a spoonful and then I realized like, I really need the creamy root beer. The creamy Zubia. root beer on that is amazing. If you're not doing really beef good. butter, bacon, and eggs, and you're allowing yourselves like root beer or, you know, Zevias or something like that, put a little bit of that over a root beer creamy ice cream. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. But I only ate half of it, so I yeah. felt really good. And all of the creamies out there, we're making all of our Keto Chow creamy ice creams with four tablespoons of butter. And so that is a full meal. If, we, if I eat the whole thing, that is a meal. Yeah, it is. And sometimes we split it and it's part of our dinner. Like this right now is the only thing I'm really eating. But it was nice to have that as kind of like a go-to so I didn't have to go cook and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so far, I'm feeling good. I don't have any bloat. I feel like my clothes are already getting looser only three me too. days in. So, Seriously, me too. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see how this goes because last time we did beef, butter, bacon, egg, we had really good results, but we're, we've added a new little twist into this, yeah. having keto chow. So will it be a blessing or will it throw a wrench in the plans? Yeah. So we're going to end the vlog here. Like I said earlier, we're going to make this a two-day vlog because today was just so busy. We weren't, we really weren't able to film anything other than sit down in the morning, run up to the mall to the city, what is it, city hall in the mall to get our passport stuff done, come home and eat. And I'm like ready for bed. We need a day two. So tomorrow we're having New York strips. These came from the side of beef that we bought. So they've been in the freezer. I took them out. I defrosted them. Still a little frozen on one side, but I can still get them ready for tomorrow. Very, very simple process. We're just going to take some Redmond's uh, kosher salt and we're going to cover them completely. And that's going to help tenderize them dry them out a little bit, and then tomorrow when it's time to eat, we're going to actually reverse sear them in the household oven. So all we do is take a bunch of salt, try to do it with one hand, and we're going to cover the whole thing. So just make sure you get both sides and also get all the edges. You want to make sure you get all of the edges. I can't really do it with holding the camera, but uh, you want to get everything. And don't worry about over salting it. It's not going to be too salty. When you go to cook it, you're going to see all these salt crystals are gone. There's going to be a nice, like, dark brown color to these. 
they'll be perfect. Now, if there is a little bit of extra salt on top, you can always wipe that off, but I have never found it to be very salty when you go to cook it. Wow, what a morning. You did so good on your devotion. It was so fun to speak this morning. I was supposed to speak on Friday, yeah. but we had like a scheduling thing with somebody else that was on staff. So we switched and I spoke today, but I'm I'm really glad I did. You do so well under pressure. I mean, we got a phone call at like eight o'clock last night and they're like, Rachel, we need you to like speak tomorrow instead. <laughs> you were in a little bit of a panic, but you a did amazing. Bit. Thank you. I get a little bit sweaty and you know in the armpits anytime like I have to speak in public, but I always feel very victorious when I do because of the fact that I have had to deal with so much anxiety and depression and and really social anxiety in the past. And yeah. so it feels like a victory every single time I'm able to yeah. speak in public. Talk about a non-scale victory. If you would have known Rachel three, four years ago, yeah, like she was puking every time she had to speak in <laughs> front of people. I remember when, when I went to her and said, I want to start a YouTube channel. She was like, you crazy. I can't get in front of a camera. And yeah. now look at you. You're doing amazing. God I think so a lot good. of that does come from keto because... I, you know, again, not doctors or nurses or health professionals, but keto really does help with some of your mental things like yeah. anxiety and stress. And it has for like me that. at least. Yeah. So, and we know a lot of people who've had those kind of results. So yeah, everything kind of got screwed up a little bit today. You're still, I see you, you, I made you coffee at five o'clock in the morning and I see you are delaying the it. drinking so that you can have one coffee experience it's just a one coffee experience for three hours yeah well i mean that that was the goal is to get in all of the coffee so i kind of like waited a little bit so that i could enjoy it because i didn't have an espresso this morning and i really wanted one i didn't need one this morning because right. that's the thing too i get very excited yeah. when i get to see people and talk and so i didn't need more caffeine this morning so I actually already had my coffee this morning. Our coffee today was uh, one egg a piece and then half a scoop of vanilla keto chow. So no butter in today's uh, coffee. But I'm 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 kind of staying away from the Nespresso because uh, we're mostly using espresso, and for me, I want a touch of sweetener, just like um. one drop of the sucralose in there. I'm not too much into drinking just like a double shot of espresso with nothing in it. I don't mind so it. I mean, I'm leaving that for you. I, Once in a while, I'm okay. I but. like having the little drop of sucralose. Don't get me wrong, but I enjoy the espresso no matter what. So one of the issues when you're adding eggs into your coffee is if you're, you know, refrigerating your eggs. Yeah. Um, it can cool down the coffee a little bit. Yeah. And we've gotten a lot of tips from people. Like you can take it out, like when you if you're gonna make your coffee in the morning, like maybe take it out, sit it on the counter for an hour or so, because that'll bring it up to room temperature. You can put it into like a warm water bath. Or use very fresh eggs. Or use fresh eggs. Well, I've come up with another solution, which I think roast Caleb out a little bit. Oh no. So the girls give us eggs. And, right. and we get between four to six eggs every single day. We're fortunate we live in Florida. So they pretty much, they don't slow down their egg laying yeah. all year long. Although one of our black ones, the black or the black one, good morning, Phoebe. Charity, <laughs> Phoebe, who is not even a year old yet, right? She's been broody. I caught her just sitting on all the wow, eggs. Wow, already? And she like growls at you when you open up the egg. Now, I, it's kind of weird that she's broody. Phoebe. So like I have to keep taking her out of there, like get off of the eggs. That's but not I, yours. I went and got the eggs last night and I'm like, why are you broody at not even a year old? But yeah. we're going to work on that. <laughs> we're working with uh, her. So here's what I did. I've started collecting the eggs and most of our eggs are in the refrigerator. But I'm going to start leaving at least a dozen, there, this is what's left from last night, of the girls' eggs just on the counter. Well, like no refrigeration. They don't need to be refrigerated so long as you don't wash them. We have come a long way because Rachel initial reaction, if you would have told me this a couple of years ago, I would have been like, no flipping way. Right. I have been to lots of farmer's markets and like outdoor venues where they're doing that. Yeah. Like they're they're they have their eggs for sale and they were fresh and yeah, they're they, out. If, if you have fresh backyard chicken eggs, 
you don't need to refrigerate them. They have a protective membrane on them. And But if you wash them, then you need to refrigerate right. them. So what we do is I'm just taking a few and I'm leaving them on the counter. We go through them so quickly. But it was it was funny. I was fully I had them on the counter over by the coffee machine. Caleb totally grossed out. I was out. fully expecting when he cleaned the kitchen last night to find them in the refrigerator. And now he just actually put them on the counter, like on the center island. But I did go in and say, "Hey, when you see that green container sitting out, you can just leave it out." And he's like, "What?" what? And I'm like, "Yeah, we're not refrigerating some of the eggs." But but again, once you start to understand, think about it. They lay them outside. They're not refrigerated. Right. It's right. only once you wash them. So while you were gone. I had to use the restroom. So TMI here. If you um, are starting carnivore or beef, butter, bacon, and egg or something like that, and you're experiencing some bathroom issues where maybe you're not able to go to the bathroom. Okay. Maybe you're a little constipated. All right. Again, not a doctor or a nurse is it, professional. Is but, it late enough in the day to start discussing this? Well, it's later on in the vlog. Okay. So, okay. so here's the thing. Sometimes... If you just add, make sure having enough fat, yeah. that'll get things running. I personally love the bathroom pyro, pyrotechnics kind of thing. But it, it's interesting. The reason I'm bringing this up was for the last couple of weeks before we got back onto beef, butter, bacon, egg, and keto chow, I was not experiencing the, the free-flowing number two. Me right? neither, if I'm honest. Lots of cheese. And that's another thing is if you're doing carnivore and including a lot of cheese, that could also kind of be backing you up a little bit. So if you're experiencing that, number one, you could just have some body change going on. You're When you're only eating meat, you don't have as much waste, right? right. We've experienced that even with our pets. Getting them onto foods that are grain-free – they don't have as much waste. Why right? you're utilizing a lot more? A lot of the pet foods and stuff and food include like fillers and corn and all that stuff. Well, your body's cheaper. not digesting it; it's right. just giving it a filler. A lot of times, the bag will even say you have to give them a lot more food. Like Tabitha gets two and a half cups of food a day. If I were to go give her the stuff with all the corn and the fillers, if you look on the bag, it says she should be eating seven cups a day. So that cuts a lot down on it the does. cost of food for our animals. But it's the same thing here. So if you're experiencing that, make sure you're eating enough. If you're eating really high protein and almost no fat, that could be causing a little bit of the constipation. There could be other issues, but it could be from the fat. So try cutting down cheese a little bit if you're not doing beef, butter, bacon, egg, and try making sure you're eating more on that one-to-one -one ratio. And it will it'll help that flow out a little bit. But it, it really made me realize what eating, the amount of cheese we were eating with all our lasagna and everything. Not that we're not going to ever eat that. But it is a side effect. It makes a difference. So much cheese in there. I have a confession to make, though. Uh oh. So while I was in the bathroom, I did a no no. I got on the scale. What? I did. We're not supposed to do that this month. I know, but. Can't help it. See, so here's the thing on New Year's, I went off the rails a little bit. I, I, I didn't go off keto. But you ate. But. A normal I, amount of cheese. I ate past a life. ridiculous amount of past I mean, life cheese. I ate probably more cheese than I would normally eat in a week in a day. Yeah. Right? Because we were making like our own like pizza toppings and that's what I was pretty much eating. Just lots of cheese. And I had a few of Michelle's chocolate truffle balls. Why not? And, you know, I went off the rails. Again, not keto. Probably ate more than 20 total carbs. I, I'd probably say I was probably closer to 40 total carbs. Just one day. But I was eating keto-type food. Yeah. And I definitely felt a little bloated the next day. Me too. But over the last couple days, this is now, what, day four of yeah. Beef Butter Bacon Egg 2.0? And... Um, I've started noticing like, hey, the clothes are like a Fitting lot better. looser. The bloat is gone. Yeah. So I was curious. And I am excited to say that just four days in, the last time I had gotten on the scale, I was 193.6. I got on the scale today and I'm 191.7. Way to go. And that is the lowest weight since that I've been since we did... Um, beef butter bacon egg the first time there was one time where i think it said like 189.9 but i think it was a fluke it was after a long day of work and sweating yeah. outside and that kind of stuff well december 31st but i'm gonna stay off the scale for now on i 
it you was, say that. It was calling my name, right? You're sitting there. Take the there batteries out. And you're, we've done that, right? We've hidden the batteries from ourselves. So December 31st, I was 156.1. Did you get on the scale? And I will see you again, scale, oh, January so 31st, 2022. So we are doing the dirtiest job ever, and Anthony is super happy about this. We're just gonna tear the grass up again. We're gonna put some more sod in the back because there's some areas that didn't take and the chickens have just dug it up. They didn't, of course, touch anything where the grass took. Okay, sod is done. It's a messy job, but somebody's gotta do it. Unfortunately, we decided to do this on a day when it's like almost 90 degrees, but at least it's done. We're gonna turn on the sprinklers, let it all set, and I'm gonna put a little barricade so that you know the chickens aren't on there right away. Okay, let's make this clear. We are not getting a pet skunk. They were awfully cute. Repeat after me. We are not. We are not. Not getting. Getting a pet dog. A pet skunk stuff. <laughs> Anthony was, I don't know, online on what TikTok. were you? TikTok and found TikTok. out about pet skunks. And he was like, I want one. $300 from the breeder and they take out the stink glands. It used to be that Pinterest was the source of all bad ideas. So like you would go there and be like, I think that I'm going to decoupage my entire wall. And that's a terrible idea. Um, but now it seems to be TikTok because it's like 30 seconds and now you have a total video of what is a huge mistake that you can make. Always waiting for you. All right. We need to go down to the pet feed store to get chicken food because they don't have any at Walmart. Plus the Walmart isn't like the greatest quality in the world. And I had to uh, change my clothes because Tabitha got us sopping wet on our long walk, but we're practicing with longer leads to try to make sure that she's like staying by me, um, but also enjoying a walk. I have some food for you as well. <gasps> hey, repeat after me. Okay. We, we have, have enough, enough animals. Animals, Joe, seriously. So we just got home from the store and I'm gonna go ahead and start the steaks. So we're gonna reverse sear the steaks, which is a little different than what I normally do, but this is something that anybody can do at home. All you need is an oven and then something to sear them at the end, like a cast iron pan or a blackstone or something like that. So when we do this, we're gonna set the oven to 225 degrees, so low temperature, and we're gonna cook the steaks until they have an internal temperature for me of 128 degrees. So what's gonna happen is it'll get to 128 degrees and we're gonna take them out and we're gonna sear them in a cast iron pan. So I should end up with an internal temperature of somewhere around 133 to 135 degrees. That's just perfect for us. And like I said, anybody can do this at home. Now we are gonna use the Innova oven, but I'm gonna use the Innova oven in a regular bake mode. We're not using the sous vide or humidity or anything like that. I'm just using the Innova oven because the other oven has some bread in it. And so I wanna put it in there but it's at a regular baking you know, setting. Also, one thing to note, make sure when you're reverse searing, take the steaks out of the refrigerator and let them come up to room temperature a little bit. You don't wanna put a cold steak in there because uh, you're, what's gonna happen is the outside's gonna get to the right temperature, the inside is not, and you're gonna end up overcooking your steaks. First thing we're gonna do is set the oven to 225 degrees. And again, if you're using a regular oven, same thing. 225 degrees. Start that preheating. Now we're gonna take our steaks and we're gonna put in some type of a thermometer. I'm using the meter. You wanna get into the middle of the steak if you can, and we have one for each steak. So we have our meter probes in and we set the app to let me know when it's 120 degrees. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of the Redmond organic lemon pepper across the whole top. And we'll flip it over. First I press it down. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so the oven is up to temperature, 225 degrees. It's just on a timer. Uh, steam is off. We're using the top, so it's just like a regular oven right now. And we're gonna stick our steaks in there. And the meter app will let me know when we get to 128 degrees. So Rachel started premiering a vlog and I ended up overcooking the steaks a little bit. So we're at about 100 and 
33 degrees internal temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and sear them, but they're a little bit more cooked than we usually like them. So this is what they look like when you reverse sear them. It needs a, just a little bit of a sear on the outside, but not as much as when you sous vide it. So I have the Blackstone, I put a little bit of baking grease and just a couple of seconds on each side. And these are done. We're gonna go ahead and bring them inside, let them rest for a second and cook up a couple of eggs. Okay, so I did slightly overcook the steaks because I put them on and then we decided to premiere a video. Right. And so it was done. It needs your undivided. And then I had to leave them sitting in the oven and I, I thought I opened up the oven door enough to get all of the heat out, but they were still going. So I'm gonna have a feeling that these are probably closer to medium. They're still good. Instead of medium rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's more of a medium, but that's okay. I it's mean- It's very tasty. Here's the thing, reverse searing is very easy. It just, it takes a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, usually it's about 30 minutes in the oven, but there is still pink in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm good with that. Mm. Mm. I know. Mm. So, so delicious. I know I'm in the minority, but I like New York strips over ribeyes. I don't think that there's a steak I've met that I don't like unless it's just overtaken with gristle. Right. But the New York strips generally don't have a little, a lot of gristle. There's a little bit of fat cap on the outside, but the inside is lean. But I put it's all about the fat cap. About a tablespoon of butter across the top of it, and so that kind of adds the fat. And then we have a couple of eggs. We've got one slice of the Maria Emmerich bread, which I then put butter on and stuck it on the blackstone to kind of oh. heat it up. The electric blackstone. The, sometimes we'll actually toast it on there, but so we're nice. in a hurry. I don't want to let the steaks get too cold and continue to cook kind of thing. But mm -mm. I, I like it this way. One thing I do want to remind people with the bread is there are carbs in this. Yeah. Okay, so there's, true. there's carbs in eggs. So if you take the recipe that we make with the keto chow, um, that was in the, the other vlog. I'll leave a link for that one up here. Uh, it does work out to be about one carb per slice if you cut it into 12 slices. Now we generally get more than 12 slices out of it, but even without the keto chow, there are carbs in egg whites. <laughs> There's carbs in the egg white powder. So when you multiply it out, you know, there are carbs. So if you break it down into 12, <laughs> each slice is about 70 calories, but it's, it's protein. When we're adding the yolk, you're adding a little bit of fat into there, but I like it that way. I don't know how to drink apparently. Because Why? it just like, it went like right down my you cock Oh, you got your water over there. Yeah. I but got my little, little bottle. But it's, it's of no help to drink water when like it went down the cough hole. So that is, that's got the Redmond, not the Redmond. That's got the keto chow um, mineral drops in it with no flavoring. So that's just a bubbly water with mineral drops, right? See, I feel like it tastes a lot like San Pellegrino. Yeah. Like a lot like it. And we're saving a lot of money. Um, I cheated again. Did you get on the scale? Well, what is wrong with you, young man? Okay, well, here's the thing. Well, thank you for calling me young man. Man. Here's the thing. So I already cheated this morning, right? And, and I got on the scale. And so I'd already cheated. So I figured like, you know what? If this is this is the mistake you can make when you have a cheat meal, right? You can go cheat I've meal to cheat today. day, to cheat month, to cheat week, to cheat month, to cheat year, right? So I got on the scale. I was the lowest I've been since before COVID. Right. And then I, we laid all that sod and we were sweating because it was hot outside. So I was like, I'm curious. Did I lay enough grass to lose five pounds? No, but I laid enough grass to get under 190 pounds. Now, <laughs> now I know tomorrow it would be right back. I'm not going to get on the scale tomorrow. No. I'm promising myself I won't. But I know that it would be right back up tomorrow. It was water weight, you know, from just moving all the sod. I, I definitely it was a hot day burned today. some energy and stuff like that. So between yesterday and today, I've gotten a lot of movement in. And then top it off that we've been doing the Oculus. And well, so we're getting a bunch of movement in. Yeah. I would like us to move the vacuum cleaner and everything so I can put my rower back down. We put it up a few days ago to clean for New Year's because people were going to be here. And then we here. parked all kinds of stuff right next And show. everything is parked in front of it. So I haven't been able to use the rower for a few days. Yeah. And I'm kind of missing it. But I'm getting activity in other ways. Oh, same here. Caleb. Uh, Caleb. 
Tabitha, my other child, and I uh, have been going on some really, really long walks and um, we're practicing on a super long leash. I really want her to be better when we walk of staying right by me, not because I'm making her, but because she's choosing to do the right thing. Right. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, I, I made runny eggs, but here's why I made runny eggs. I put it on top of my steak already. It's like a gravy on top of your steak. Mm -hmm. And that is just, look at that sauce. Mm. It's perfect. It's the only way that I want runny eggs. Mm -hmm. Or bread. Or on grits. When we used to have grits, I always wanted to put it on that. And now I just use Where it. is grits talk coming from? I don't know. I'm just thinking about the only way I ever wanted a runny egg. Even then I didn't. But I do love it as a sauce on a burger, like, or on steak or something like that. It just adds some great flavor to it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're going to end the vlog here because this is already two days, mm. right? Um, dinner tomorrow, I have to go in the freezer and look and see what we should have. I'm thinking a flank steak because I haven't defrosted anything. I love flank steak. And the flank steaks defrost super quick. And then I'll also take out a roast and maybe on Friday we can do like some kind of a rotisserie roast or something like this that. Or maybe good. make something else in the crock pot. I, I haven't decided yet, but... You know, it's nice having a freezer full of meat. I can just go shopping out Thank there. Thank you, Lord. And then the fallback is always eggs and bacon and ground beef to frost super quick. That's so like one of the days will probably be ground beef. The actually. happiest consolation prize. Yeah. Because there's always ground beef. I always think that. Right. Like, I do like my fried eggs too. I'm a lot like Miriam. She and I could eat a fried egg just at any time, yeah. day or night. But um, I do like ground beef in a pinch. So we're going to end the vlog here. Uh, let us know how you guys are doing on Beef Butter Bacon and Egg 2.0. If you're not doing that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just let us know down in the comment section, what are you doing? What was your January reset or your January challenge to yourself? And are you sticking with it? Yeah. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we've linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.